Um, you imagine what went on here. Parties, um, uh, you know, the master of the house entertaining in here. And I've got this theory that he's probably still here. Whoa, you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Right, the wall behind you. What was that? It'll only be for 10 minutes maximum. Leave them down here by myself. Yeah. Oh, the battery's going on this. I won't get you a new battery. <laughs> it's not working, is it? <laughs> no. Located on the outskirts of Doncaster, St. Catherine's Asylum, formerly known as St. Catherine's Hall, was home to wealthy cloth merchant George Banks and his daughter Georgina. After the Banks family relocated to Scarborough, the hall was later placed for auction after being in the Banks family's possession for 90 years and would be sold to the Ministry of Health in 1930 for just over £25,000. The Ministry of Health would convert the building into a mental institute, housing female patients before it would officially become a hospital that temporarily treated injured soldiers and had two children's wards treating infectious diseases. Many deaths have occurred during the hospital's service and it wasn't long until the building's latest residents would start experiencing the hospital's darker past. Loud screams, dark shadows and mumbling voices are only part of what is experienced here. The ghostly apparitions of soldiers have been seen walking down the corridors, seemingly checking themselves out of the hospital, and the strong feeling of being watched is felt upon the guests and staff, to the point that some staff members will refuse to enter the building alone. But what would we find on our stay here? We have one night to find out. After having a walk around in this now modern and welcoming building, it was hard to ever imagine it housing any negativity at all. But this building does have a dark past, and it wasn't long before we started to experience things. So right now we're just on our walk around at St Catherine's Asylum, and Will and Craig, you've just heard something down here, haven't you? Yeah. Um, while Craig was in here to face into the light with the other camera, I heard um, a little whistle like go and it just sort of cut out the, like proper quick and then I heard what sounded like someone's phone go off but no one's got a phone down because I already asked Craig and he hasn't got it, it's, it's turned off mm. <coughs> excuse me um, then as he come out he went to the right into the water the boiler room and while he was in there, after like a couple of seconds, once he stood still, I heard as if someone had a watch down here and it was going did -did 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 -did, like a long going off. Once I asked Craig again when he came out, he said no, he hasn't got anything like that on and it's like everything's turned off. Mm. On further inspection of this sound Will heard, we later discovered it was one of many light sensors around the building, leaving this as explainable. Beauty <laughs> therapy. There you go, Josh. Um, you might do you some good there. Oh, that's cheers. Fuck yourself in first. What is this? After completing our walk around of the building, it was now time for us to begin our nighttime investigation. I'm really looking forward to uh, the investigation tonight at St Catherine's Asylum uh, here in Doncaster. Um, I've had a few things happen already tonight um, since we've been here and I'm just hoping we get a lot more activity and a lot more things happening while we are here. Uh, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to being here tonight in uh, St Catherine's Asylum in Doncaster. 
We've been walking around uh, so far for a, an hour or two and uh, we've already had some things happen right up here in the light, nice and warm, so I'm uh, really looking forward to getting down somewhere in the dark alone. I'm really looking forward to tonight's investigation. We've already had some stuff happening, as uh, Will said, and um, I'm really looking forward to it, so we'll see if we get anything. We began our investigation off by splitting up into two groups in the servant quarters. Me and Craig remained in one room on one side of the building, while Josh and Will went to the other side of the building on the same floor. Right, so right now we're going to do a spirit box session um, and see if we can capture any results. We are in one of the servants' rooms. Um, as I said earlier, they're quite generous, so let's see if we get anything. Hello? In the room behind? Are there any spirits up here? Could you please make a bang? That's the light timer. Can you make a noise for us? We're going to this room, would you say? So this looks like another servant's quarters room, so that was set the talker 2 device up again on this table. Let's see if we get anything. If there's any spirits here that would like to talk to us today, you can do by talking to, to this device on the table. We will not harm you, the device will not harm you. Have you got any questions? Uh, if there is any spirits here, any people used used to be here when it was an asylum, any children from when it used to be a school, um, if you could make a noise, uh, talk to us through the talker that's on the table. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm just going to say this now, um, that's the uh, light sensors going off, so that's debunked. Uh, this is your last chance now, if there's anything you would like to say, please speak into this device on the table. It would be truly grateful, thank you. Are there any spirits in here that wish to communicate with us? Can you please come and speak to us through this device? What was that? I don't know, that was right. That was right behind me. I actually physically felt I did. the wall. I saw it on here as well, I saw the, uh, the sound spiked on here. At this exact moment, me and Craig both hear and feel a very loud bang on the wall behind us. We cannot claim this is paranormal due to other people being in the building at the same time. However, 
we heard no footsteps leaving the area or any sign of anyone playing tricks on us. Could this be the ghost of one of the servants who used to live here? What was that? I did. I saw it on there as well, I saw the, uh, the sound spiked on there. Is there any spirits at all here with us today? Would you like to say anything? You can speak to me through this device in my left hand. At this exact moment, Josh and Will capture an EVP on their digital recorder. We will enhance the audio so you can hear it better. Is there any spirits at all here with us today? If you'd like to say anything, you can speak to me through this device in my left hand. If there is any spirit here with us, make a noise, bang. After asking for a bang on the wall, Will gets a response to his command. Unknown to them, this was just the start of things to come. If there is any spirit here with us, make a noise, bang. Would you be able to do that for his end, please? That's just me moving on the floorboard to the squeaker. Oh, that, darling. <laughs> if that is you me making them little knocks, could you do it a bit louder for us, please? Yeah. Yeah. Right, the wall behind you. After capturing a series of knocking sounds coming from the walls of the room, Josh and Will capture what sounds like something being thrown at the wall next door. Again, we can't claim this to be paranormal, as nobody left the room to investigate, but the likelihood of this being somebody else is unfortunately higher than normal due to the venue being shared. And because this happened to me and Craig earlier, it does leave us asking questions as to who or what caused these bangs. Would you be able to do it one more time for us, please, just before we go? Whoa, I like he's going on up over there. Whoa, you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Right, the wall behind you. Shows. I think I'm going to get uh, Ben and Craig in here because we're actually arguing some yeah. activity. I think it'd be a good idea. Right, yeah, it's just kind of the right end. So let's go again. Yeah. That's in the VVP. That was right behind you then as well. Yeah. Right on that wall. That was loud. After capturing no more evidence in the servants' rooms, Josh and Will decided to return to myself and Craig who were also experiencing some kind of activity. Do you want me to go through the desk? Can do it. It's literally right behind me. Oh! What was that? Can you touch that again, please? That just went off, didn't it? Yeah. Can you make the REM pod go off again, please? 
Josh? Yes? Go into the room next door where that toilet is. Yeah. It'll be right in front of you. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah, that? Is there anything in there? Has anything fallen? No, there's nobody in here. Nothing's fallen, which I can see. We just had a massive bang on that wall. That's what we've just got in the room that we've been in. Right behind Josh, we had a bang on the door that was right next to us. We got a little tap. We shut. Then another door that's in the far corner. And then we asked, I asked again, and it was like even louder. Yeah, right, right the back of Josh on the wall. Really loud, really loud. We got it, we so got Josh one. Josh said we'll come back here, get used, see if he wanted to go there. But when we came there, it sounded like he was really having some stuff. Yeah, as well. We just had um, a massive bang on this wall. Like literally, just coming in. We felt it. It was literally like this. Yeah, that's, that's and then that went off yeah, as that's well. That's just I've actually got it on the EVP recorder, so I don't listen back to that. Yeah. That was <laughs> no, sorry, Craig. That was me just doing a uh, showing them what happened. That was exactly what it was like. Yeah. There's nothing in here that would have. No, I mean that's the wall. It literally. That's the wall. Been... That. Yeah. If you just come out a second, there's actually no pipe on the wall. That wall either. If you look, it's just. Tiles. There is a pipe, but if you bang it, no. Look at this. Come look at this, Greg. Yep. The pipe coming from the toilet. Yeah. Kick it. Just go back into the that is nowhere near. It can't be a pipe. That was. No. That's. That is literally. Yeah. That was it. You listen back to the on. That was it. There's some back this behind me. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we got. Yeah, that's what we got. Right. Yeah, it was like it was, it was quiet at first on the door. We I shut the door and we asked for something on the bed. So that's, it was like a little knock on the door. Mm. Then we asked for it again. We went on the door in the far left corner from me. It's like over the right on the right from Josh. We asked for it again. Another knock. And then we said ask for it again. And then it was like even louder. And more, well, really more, yes, more force, wasn't jump. it? Right behind mm. Josh, it made them jump. After capturing no more evidence on the top floor, we went down into the basement to see what evidence we could gather. So right now, we've just let the public go back up to one of their groups they were in earlier, and we're going to continue in the basement to see if we can capture any activity. Was that a water pipe or something? Just want to click. Oh, it's one of these, wasn't it? Sorry. And um, what we do now is, somebody said from a group but they lying on this bed, which is an operating bed, and they felt very uncomfortable. So I'm going to lie on there now and see if I can capture anything. So, if there are any spirits in here with us right now, and you don't like me being on this bed, can you please come and stand next to me and push me off, please? I mean, you know how. After being on the table for 15 minutes, I let Josh swap places to see what he could feel, before letting him know his fate. Anything Josh? No, I'm just like, my legs feel like it's being pushed. Like, you're getting it now, are you? Yeah, are you getting it? Yeah, I just want to go like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you be able to do an experiment down here on your own? No, it's yes or no. I'm not telling you what it is. Yes or no. Tell me what it is, then I might say it's or no. It'll only be for 10 minutes, maximum. Leave it down here by myself. Yeah. Oh, the battery's going on this. I won't get you a new battery. <laughs> it's not working. 
Oh. Yeah? Ten minutes. Yeah? Make it five and I'll do it. Ten minutes. Right. Handcuffed. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. I can hear you. If anything happens, I will be outside just above. No, I'm alright. Go on. We've all done it. These are genuine ex-police speed cuffs. Um, I've been in these before at the Drake Low Tunnels. There is no way of getting out of them. Uh, Josh, you have to have your camera, please. As we're going to have you blind, so you're not having a camera. The only camera in here will be the one there facing you. So, Josh. Let's give him one of your arms, please. Just your ears, just the witnesses. Okay. Nice and tight, Josh cannot move. And then. Just get the camera in on there, Will. There is no way Josh can move. No. That is going to be there, running alongside him. Um, if you need to get out, scream for us. Okay? Back in 10 minutes. Okay guys, come on. Let's go. Good luck Josh. Good luck Josh, mate. Yeah. See you later. There is any spirits, uh, you can talk to me if you can talk to you right it's next to the rim pod, which is next to me, down there.
which are you know, some of walking about. But like I said, I don't know. It could just be the pipes above me. Capturing no evidence on Josh's 10 minute lone vigil, we returned from our break to set Josh free before heading to our next part of the building. So right now we've got Richard Felix joining us. Richard, it's fantastic to nice meet you, to mate. Nice to see you. Um, and basically, we're going to go and continue our investigation. We've got Richard for 15 minutes now. So, you ready, guys? Yeah. Right, let's begin. Let's go and find some ghosts. So right now, we're just about to go into the dining room at the St. Catherine's Asylum. Um, we've got Richard Felix here, and he is using the SLS camera to try and capture any which I am most impressed with, because I, I have never seen one before. It's quite something. <laughs> this is this is good. I like it. I'm just hoping I can catch something on there. So let's see if we can see if we can capture anything in here. Okay. Well, this is one of my favourite rooms. Is it? Oh yeah, because if if I presume this was the dining room, um, you imagine what went on here. Parties. Um, uh, you know, the master of the house entertaining in here, and I've got this theory that he's probably still here. Yeah. Um, Residually or intelligent? You think? Intelligently. Oh, intelligence. Yeah. yeah. Um, for the simple reason that, that this is he designed. If he designed the house, I mean, it is the most fabulous place, and, and there's every possibility that he may still be here. Yeah. Still thinks he's in residence. Yeah. Because this was his. This was his baby. Is that George? Yeah, Mr. Banks. George Banks. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's a possibility, and, and what a fantastic room. It is. So I'm looking for him now. <laughs> Mr. Banks, come on, sir. <laughs> come on, I, I know you're here. Uh, and it would be absolutely amazing if you would show yourself to me. I, um, I'm not mediumistic, I'm not psychic. I'm not sensitive, or sorry, should I say, I'm not asensitive, but I believe that I am sensitive to the subject. And I believe that it could be you that haunts this place, because I don't think you've ever moved on, because you love this place so much. Um, and it would be a great pleasure and an honour <laughs> if you would show yourself to me now in this, this what could well have been your favourite room. I'm sure you had Christmases, New Year's, celebrations, dinner parties here. And I believe that some of your energy could still be here now. And I have in front of me an amazing machine that can actually see you, even though you're probably on a different frequency, possibly a different vibration, a faster vibration than we're on, on this earth plane. But, um, I just love to see you sitting at the head of your table in what could be your favourite room with a piece of your original furniture still here. That would be the cabinet, is it? That's the cabinet, yeah. Mr Banks, I very respectfully ask you to uh, show yourself in this room to me now. I know those four aren't ghosts. <laughs> I know what would be used to try and help us in this investigation. We could use the Talker 2 device, which works in a similar way to an EMF detector. However, it's got a phonetic word generator in it. If, <coughs> if Mr. Banks is to say anything, hopefully, there's no table there. Hopefully. <laughs> Got it. We have to speak to us. There's a machine that enables you to talk to us, even though we're on a different level, different dimension, different frequency. You could communicate with me now, if you would. I only come here with the greatest respect. I don't have any fear for you. I hope you don't have any fear for me being here, or us being here. But if you could try very hard, gather all the energy in this room, 
the energy from us, your own energy. And if you can't appear, could you possibly talk to us using the machine that's on the table? After capturing no more evidence on our stay here, it was now time to conclude our investigation of St. Catherine's Asylum.